Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. It is day one. My name is James Bonanno, and I will be your host over the next two days. I am joined by the talented, he doesn't even really need an introduction, Jesus Ramirez, uh, also known as the Photoshop Training Channel on YouTube. Uh, Jesus, welcome to the stream today. Hey, James, thank you so much for having me, and I'm excited to be working with you for the first time. We've known each other off um, streams, but I'm happy to be doing one with you for the first time. Absolutely. Yeah, the uh, the pleasure is all mine. I am super excited to see what Jesus you uh, you have for us in store over the next two days. Uh, for those that are new to these Adobe Lives and the formats here, we will be uh, having Jesus walk us through uh, some insane designs of some movie poster today in Photoshop. Uh, if you want to join, we will be on here the same time tomorrow. Uh, everyone is already excited in the chat. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Sam. Hello, Marsha. Cody Bear, what is up, everyone? Jesus, you definitely, uh, you draw a huge audience. So uh, I am very excited to uh, get the chat rolling. And without further ado, maybe let's just kick it off. Um, Jesus, just give us a quick little intro, maybe uh, show us some of the uh, the work that you're gonna be getting into today. And we will just hop right into uh, the stream. Sounds great. Um, so um, I am, can you guys see my screen now? Uh, I believe we can. Yes. Let's see. Going down to the chat here. Fantastic. So this is um, my Behance page. You can go to behance.net slash JR from PTC to see my Behance. And from here, you can see some of the work that I've done. And also you can hover over to my links or someone in here. Um, you know what? I was just telling you, James, that I really don't like talking about <laughs> myself. But in case you don't know me, I have a YouTube channel called the Photoshop Training Channel where you can go and uh, you know, learn Photoshop if you like. And this is some of the work that I've done. Um, if you enjoy this stream, you might also enjoy uh, this Adobe Live compositing stream with a superhero. And this one here, this is actually with my friend Lisa Carney, who is a, a movie poster designer. So these two streams here, uh, her and I were designing posters together. So they're on here on Behance in case you want to see those older um, streams I've done for Adobe Live. And then some of my work that I've done is also here if you want to check it out. But yeah, Photoshop awesome. Training Channel is the website and the YouTube channel. Perfect. Well, thank you for that introduction. Your oh, there's work. my friend Lisa Carney in the chat. Hey, Lisa, yes. good to see you. Hi, Yay. Lisa. Welcome. Hi, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were just talking about you, Lisa. <laughs> oh, Sean, good to see you, Sean. If we have no idea who this guy is, more info. Oh, we will give you guys <laughs> all the info that you need. Um, but yeah, Jesus, your work is absolutely stunning. It's it's so creative. And I think, you you know, the breadth of work that you have on your Behance um, for your design work. And then obviously your Photoshop training channel, um, you are a wealth of knowledge and a great educator. And I think uh, a lot of people will get uh, a ton of, uh, education out of this stream today, as I will myself. I was telling you earlier, um, I'm normally a uh, video, uh, after effects premiere guy. And so today I'm stepping mm -hmm. into some, I am knowledgeable of Photoshop, but I am nowhere near what, uh, as knowledgeable as you. So I'm going to learn just as much as everyone in the chat cool. will today. So. I considered using After Effects for a tiny little bit in this stream, but I was like, no, I don't want to mess it up. So I decided not to, <laughs> but, but see, if I would have done it, you would have helped me out in case I got into trouble. Yeah, exactly. We could help <laughs> each other out. Yeah. Um, sweet. But so before, before you jump in, I know, Hey, Suze, you wanted me to just kind of let everybody know, um, the assets once yes. we actually get in here, um, can actually be available to anyone that is watching the stream at Photoshop training channel.com slash Thor. Thor, because uh, we're going to create this Thor image you guys are, are probably seeing on screen now. Yes. Yes. Yes, we are. Holy, holy cow. I am pumped. <laughs> yeah. So Photoshop training channel.com slash Thor. That will get you into the, uh, let me just show you the page instead of just describing it to you. If you go into Photoshop training channel.com uh, slash Thor, you should see this page here and it has these Adobe stock images. These are all from the free library. So you should be able to download them for free. You need an Adobe ID. So sign, if you don't have an Adobe ID, you can get one for free. And in case you didn't know, if you go into Adobe stock, uh, into stock.adobe.com, you can change this drop down into free and then you can search for whatever you want. So like what I did is I, I think I typed in the word hero, if I'm not mistaken. And then I got all these, you know, different heroes. And at some point I found that Thor character. <laughs> I think the, the point... guy with the guy with the belly was my hero, man. He was looking, <laughs> he was looking solid. Well, he, he definitely looks the, more like me than anything else. I, I, <laughs> I definitely would agree. I, I, in my mind, I look like this guy in the top left, but there in reality is more like this guy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, um, 
it's it's uh this is this is how you can get free assets and everything that i have on 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 that page um well everything i used to create this poster is on that page and you can download it and follow along or create your own and maybe tomorrow you guys could maybe post some links and i would love to see what you came up with but i'll quickly just go through um you know these deconstructing this composite and this is what we're going to work on today and you know it's not going to end up looking exactly the same i just kind of needed an idea of where i was going to go instead of just freestyling it for you guys um but you can see all these different layers make up that composite and i'm hoping to do all this within the next hour and 15 or so that we have yeah, um but it, yeah it, go, it goes fast it, it goes uh, it very goes fast. very fast and again um, the the just a little housekeeping real quick before you get into it jesus i don't want to yeah. take up more of your time but no problem for those that are new to this kind of format anyone that is here joining us in the chat uh, which you absolutely should be doing because this is going to be spectacular uh please uh, ask questions. This is an interactive experience. I want to uh, be able to have this, you know, be a, a creative environment here and Jesus will answer uh, everything that he can as he is is editing uh, these composites. So leave any questions, comments, anything will go in the chat uh, as you guys tune in. Um, and without further ado, Jesus, take it away, my man. Yep, yep. Um, one last thing before we start, I, I do want to say thank you um, for some people who are saying like, oh, good to see you back or whatever. I've been getting a lot of messages from people and, you know, I've talked about it publicly, so I'll just quickly mention it. I recently had a medical emergency. I recently had a stroke in, uh, on October, um, so it's been about like eight weeks now. So I'm, I'm doing well. I'm fully, well, I don't want to say fully. I'm, I'm almost close to fully recovered. So I appreciate all the kind messages and it's good to be back on Adobe Live teaching you guys. So thank you so much for the people who are saying that they're glad to see me back. So thank you oh, so much. Absolutely. And we're glad to have you here healthy with us today. Um, so yeah, very, very happy you're feeling better, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, let's get right to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new document. You guys know how to do this. I'm, I'm assuming if not, you can go into file new. And I'm going to just do a 1280 by 1920 size and I'll click on create. And this is going to be where I'm going to create my poster. Sometimes I like to create like a solid color fill layer just so I can have something in the background is so that, so that I don't see transparent pixels. Sometimes it just helps me, helps me visualize things better. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I find it that it helps me. Something else that I like to do, and again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. So I like to delete layer masks if, I, if they're not doing anything. So there you go. No layer mask on that, on that um, background layer. And let's just start with the background. So I have this image here. And again, in case you missed it, um, I have a library here with all these images that I'm going to use today, but you could also find them at photoshoptrainingchannel.com slash Thor. And they're all free Adobe stock assets that you can download and, and mess around with if you like. But anyway, so this is gonna be part of my um, background here and I'm just going to make it larger. I don't really want this lake area. So I just want maybe, you know, just make it large enough, something like this. And, you know, right, right now I'm not being precise and you don't have to be just, you know, select the areas that, uh, you think will work for your composite. Also, I know for sure that I'm not going to need this top part and I'm just going to hide it here from the horizon line, just because the horizon, this is where the sky will start. And I'm going to use a different image for the sky. Here's a trick for you. If you hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask, it'll, um, instead of creating a mask that mm. keeps the things you selected, it'll create a mask and hide the things that you selected. So, um, that's, so a, that's like a very not good, non-destructive way to not have to just copy and paste a new layer and delete that old layer. You can just, you can just do it right on that layer. That's correct. Exactly. And and you, you hit the nail right in the head, non-destructive. You can always come back and edit it. And the reason that you want to do that is, you know, maybe you realize you made a mistake. And now with the brush tool, you can come in here and paint with white to reveal the mountain. Maybe, you know what, maybe I want a mountain here. So, mm. so I can come back and, and keep that if I want to. Um, I don't know why I unlinked the layer, but unlinking the layer to a mask. So I just did it. I don't know why, <laughs> but the, the reason that you would do this is so that you can move the layer independently from the mask. I don't want to do that, but for some reason I, I did it. Um, but well, now sometimes, gonna... sometimes you're on autopilot. You're just working yeah. at it so easily that it's, it's very easy to fall into that autopilot mode. It, exactly. Like, I don't know why I did it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to drag this down and this is an image of a, a cloud as you can see, and it's a really cool looking cloud. And I'm just going to place it below the background. 
Um, and again, just try to match it to the horizon. You can see the horizon right here. I'm trying to keep things into perspective, in perspective. And the reason being is that looks much better because it's in perspective than if I were to do something like this. You know, that doesn't look realistic. So you always tr you always want to try to match the horizon lines of the image that you bring in so that things look more realistic. Also, um, notice that really, really sharp edge there. That doesn't look too good. And, you know, I don't need a perfect selection for this. It's going to be in the background. It's going to be blurry. There's going to be so many things in front of it. So I don't really need to worry about a perfect selection, but that sharp edge will probably show. So I'm just going to blur it a little bit. There's a lot of ways of blurring a layer mask. One of the ways is by selecting the layer mask ex itself going into properties and you can click on and drag on the feather slider and see how it just blurs it. So this is a non-destructive way of, of blurring a mask. So I'm just going to blur it a little bit and that looks much better. That, right. you know, you won't be able to notice that sharp line when we're done with the background. I don't necessarily need to create any type of, um, you know, like uh, color matching, but I'm going to show a technique just in case. So one of the things that I usually like to do is create what I call check layers just to check my composites. So what I do is I create a black and white adjustment layer so that I can see um, the image without any color and I can see the brightness values of the image and see if they match. So if I, you know, think that maybe the I don't know, for example, maybe the foreground, um, I think it might be a little too bright for my liking, then I can just create either a levels or a curves adjustment layer. I'll do levels just because it's easier to understand and then clip it to the layer below. That way I can only adjust the background and nothing else. So maybe just add a little bit more contrast. Maybe the this point right here makes it so that the darkest pixel is black, but instead I want it to be just, you know, a gray that is just off black. And I, I don't know, to my eye, that looks better. Does that look better? I don't know, but yeah, can, no, it, it definitely does. We can, That's we a, can yeah. <laughs> now, Jesus, do you typically, when you're in your workflow, are you tip, uh, you know, in compositing, are you typically adding all of your elements because you know, and in this case, obviously, you know what the final output and the final product is going to be, but in, you know, cases for a client or just personal projects that you're working on, will you typically put all of the assets into your uh, you know, composition and then go back and do all these things? Or do you tend to like work step by step and build everything? So by the time you get to the end, you're just doing, you know, refinements. That's a very good question. So yes, you're right. Um, we already know what the final piece is going to be more or less. So I kind of have an idea of, of, of where the assets belong. But for example, when I was working on it for the first time, I was just dragging and dropping a bunch of images on top and seeing if they were going to work for the style that I wanted. And some of images didn't work, some did, and I didn't spend any time fine tuning anything. I just wanted to make sure that that visually, okay, does this background look okay with this foreground, for example? And if gotcha. it did, then I would spend fine uh, time fine tuning it and making it look good. I already know that these images are going to work at least to, to a degree for what I want it to be. So I can spend a little more time fine tuning these steps now and the reason that i'm teaching it this way is because i don't want to come back to the background later on maybe come back and, and make a minor adjustment but I'll, i don't want to come back to the background and, and then do this whole process if that makes any sense yep totally gotcha cool yeah so now um, i'm going to disable this layer and again i probably wouldn't do all of this because this is going to be in the background and you're probably not going to be able to see it that well but i still want to show some of these steps in case your images require it but here's another another type of che uh, check layer you can create a solid color fill layer and you know you can make it a shade of gray it doesn't have to be right at 50 percent. like i'll leave it at 42 that's fine um just make sure it's gray change the blending mode to luminosity so that you crush all the luminance values into that 40 whatever percent value it was and then you can see the colors in the image i know it's a little difficult mm. to see so you can create a hue and saturation adjustment layer bump it up and you can see that the foreground has these shades of i mean it's pretty similar usually usually they look much more different than that usually what happens is when you create something like this i'm going to fake it um when you create something like this you might see that like you know the, the foreground looks super blue and then the other thing doesn't match gotcha. so but this these actually match pretty well so I, I could leave it and if i really really wanted to make a change i guess i could I could just create um, for this, and I'll rename my layer so that you, you know you know what I'm clicking on. So this is the the background, or I guess I should call it just a ground ground. This is my ground. Uh, here's a tip for you guys: when you are renaming a layer, like this one's the clouds, you can just press the Tab key on the keyboard, 
and it just switched over to the next one. See that one's the color fill? I can just call this one background. Mm. And press tab key again, and it's gonna jump up to the hue and saturation and, and all that. So great little tap. great little tip. Yeah, cool. So now on this ground, I'm going to create a selective color and this adjustment layer allows you to select the color and then add or subtract the color. And I know that sounds super weird, but I'm gonna just select neutrals for now and I can drag these sliders to the right and add the color that it's in the label. So if I drag the cyan to the right, it'll add cyan. But mm -hmm. if I drag it to the left, it'll add the opposite color. The opposite of cyan is red, the opposite of magenta is green and the opposite of yellow is blue. And if you forget, just create a color balance adjustment layer and you can see it there. Super, super okay. clear in this adjustment layer. Um, but anyway, with the selective color adjustment layer, I'm just gonna bring down the cyan to add more red, maybe just yellow. I'd probably do a better job with yellow. Yeah, there you go. We got rid of all the blue. So it's pretty much the same. I mean, it's not gonna be a huge difference, but let me just put all these layers into a group. Control G on Windows, Command G on the Mac, and I'll just call these layers checks so that we know what they are. Um, and also I'm gonna, I'm gonna save because I don't want this to like die on me and, and lose all this work. So another tip, they're always saved. Oh yeah, my fingers, talk about autopilot. I think my fingers are constantly on command S mm -hmm. or whatever the save as function is on any, on any project, even though I don't realize I'm doing it. It's, it's uh, super, super important because all this yeah. work goes into it and your, your computer can crash. It does happen from time to time. Definitely, definitely. Um, so. What I've done is just, you see the difference before and after? <laughs> so do you guys think that looks yeah. better? Yeah, no, that that's a, it's subtle, you know, but mm -hmm. like when you when you actually turn those on and off, you can certainly see that it's important to do that uh, matching because there was a, right. there was a bit of a, a different uh, color there. Yeah, I mean, and to be frank with you, like at the end of the day, it's probably like 2% different, you know? So do you really need to do it? Who knows, depends on how the final, what at the end, what matters is the final image. Right. But, you know, a lot of times these little tiny one or two percents is what really makes the huge difference at the yeah. end. So who well, knows? I, th I think a point to, you know, to point out here, Jesus, is that uh, if you're, you know, if you're watching the stream and you're looking to composite something mm -hmm. for the first time, or maybe you're just starting out, I mean, you can still find uh, clouds and skies and all these assets uh, for free through Adobe Stock that might, uh, they might turn you away from thinking that they work well together if their mm -hmm. their colors are so drastic. But obviously what we just saw is that you can certainly change those to match a little more accurately. Um, so I guess the point is, you know, like your, your imagination can still run free and allow mm -hmm. you to take assets that you might not otherwise use if you think you can't actually match them in Photoshop. Right, right, exactly. Um, what I'm gonna do now is select this background uh, cloud layer and select the top levels layer and just put everything into a smart object so I can just treat it as a single image. So see, just basically one single photo. Um, and I can do, you know, drag it down if I need more room in the, in the you know, top or, or whatever. So for now, maybe I think I'll just drag it up a, a tiny little bit, maybe something like that. Um, and then I think this, this will probably work. And another reason that I wanted to put this into a smart object is so that I could blur it. So filter, blur, uh, actually blur gallery and what i'm going to do is add a tilt shift just to kind of recreate the blurring effect that a camera would mm -hmm. would with a shallow depth of field so basically the way this works is the two solid lines in the center will keep everything inside of them in focus and then there's these dashed lines on the top and at the bottom everything between the solid and dashed lines will be a gradual transition from focus to out of focus or blurry and not blurry and you can sort of you know, figure this out just by placing this here at the bottom and then think, all right, well, if this was an actual lens and the person standing here, how would the background blur? Or maybe it'll be, it'll be a gradual transition to like blurry. And I don't want it so blurry, maybe just a tiny little bit, you know, I don't know, maybe something like four or something, uh, maybe more just so we could see it a little better. Uh, and the reason that I made it into a smart object is so that if I change my mind later, I can double click on this label and I could just, you know, change it if I want to. Gotcha. But cool, that's cool. that's that's my Mac, uh, background. Let me see what else I have in this library because I already forgot. Um, I guess we can work on on the Thor image now. So what I'll do is um, I'll work on it on a separate layer just so we could you know or a separate document just so that I could really see what's going on. And, and usually when something like this, I like to just crop it just because it's got too much white on top, and just you know just crop it in. And so there's so many ways of selecting subjects in Photoshop. Um, some are you know automated with AI, a lot of them require manual labor. This is actually, 
it's a combination of an easy one and a hard one. And it's really hard in one area right here. This area yeah, here hair. is really difficult. Um, mm -hmm. I consider leaving it out as in like just cutting it out and not having any hair or maybe bringing it in here from a different model. But we'll just work with what we have. Um, the reason that this is difficult is because his hair is blonde and look at the highlights. The highlights are actually close to white. So mm. it's very difficult. See, these these are basically white strands of hair. So it's, it, that's very difficult. See how you have this highlight here and then it's dark here. And it just, it, even on this actual like photo that hasn't been cropped out, it actually looks like it was cropped out. Right. See that? Yeah. So, yeah. so this is going to become very, very difficult, but we'll work with what we have. Um, another thing that... I guess I'll show you instead of just saying it. If, if you go into, I mean, I really like these tools, right? The new AI features in Photoshop. If you go into select subject or even with in the properties panel, remove background, it, uh, Photoshop will do a, a pretty good job. It's, it's not a bad job at all, but in this case, you know, we're missing the cape and it doesn't do that good of a job in other areas like uh, this this thing here and obviously the hair. The, so there's right. a lot of things that we would need to fix and, and you can probably bear, better see the imperfections if I create, you know, like a solid color layer and, and show you. So there's a lot of imperfections um, that we would need to fix. This is the, the before and the after. By me doing this, you can probably see them better. See, we're missing the cape back here. So there's a lot of things that, that are not oh, working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, in sir. this case, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say it's certain. I mean, it's certainly a good start for just a quick, a quick AI fix, you know. And and I do agree that a lot of these features that have been implemented, I believe this past Adobe Max was when a lot of these um, were implemented with some of these uh, subjects. But yeah, um, it, from where it was years ago to what it is now, it's a really great first step. But obviously, uh, there's still a lot of work to be done there. Definitely, and and one of the things I want to add to that is you kind of have to make a decision. Is it easier for you to fix those little imperfections or to just do a completely type of selection? Um, in this case, it probably takes about the same amount of time, but I'll just show you something yeah. different so that you can see. Um, one of the older ways of just making selections is by going into the channels panel. And from here, you can just look at the channel that has the most contrast between the foreground and the background. One of the good things is that the background is close to white. It's good for most of the image except the hair. So I can go into the blue channel and duplicate it because that one has the most contrast between the foreground and background. And if you go into image, apply image, you can sort of do this crazy mathematical equation where you take the merge composite layer with your blue copy, this is my mask, and apply one of these different blending modes. Um, so for example, if I apply the multiply blending mode, notice how it just makes everything darker mm. and you have an opacity slider if you want it. But in this case, I'm going to apply that press. Okay. And do it again, image, apply image. And the reason that I'm doing this is because you can actually see that it's doing a really good job in keeping these hairs dark in other areas, dark, um, because this will eventually become a mask. And then I can combine that by going into image adjustment levels and then just dragging these sliders in. That's the black point, and this is the white point. Notice the background is getting whiter, and yep. I could also, you know, use this slider as well. And I can come in and use the dodge and burn tools. The dodge tool makes pixels brighter under range. I'll select highlights, and I'm just gonna paint in the highlights here. And I'm, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to get it close enough, so you don't have to be precise at all. At least not yet. And so, we, Jesus, as you're as you're editing this, uh, let me just ask a, a naive uh, novice Photoshopper question here, <laughs> um, which yeah. I know the answer to. But just for those that are actually in the chat here, your goal with this is to create uh, so much contrast that you can mask the background out without having to worry about these hairs being lost in what you're masking out. Correct. So you're creating, you know, uh, black blacks. And then these, you know, super, super uh, white highlights so that that separation is even more obvious, correct? That is correct. And, and, and once that's done, I'll make a decision and see what I keep and what I don't keep. I probably won't keep everything. Um, and that's another, another tip for you guys. You don't have to keep everything that's in, in, in an image. Like people are not going to know that, mm. you know, this little tiny strand of hair is missing. I could take every, look, watch this. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I can literally take all this hair away and nobody will ever know like right, right you know so it's it's totally up to you right 
So you know, are just... you are you using a trackpad? Sean in the chat wants to know if you're using a trackpad or if you're using. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about this in the past. I'm using a mouse for whatever reason. When I teach, I use a mouse, but if I wanted to, I could use my my tablet. It's right here. I actually just push the button, as you can see, as I grabbed it, um, so that. Um, but but yeah, I have my tablet next to me. But I don't know. It, it, once I started teaching, I always hated traveling with. Um, my tablet so i just yeah. got really good at teaching without it and even when i'm doing a live stream now from home i'm still teaching with a mouse i don't know why it's just forced to have it but i do have my uh my tablet and the reason that it's like here next to me and i didn't put it away is because i considered using it at some point for something else but you know for this i wasn't even thinking about it so there you go but yes yeah, awesome. to answer your question is i do use one it's a wacom intuos pro medium Gotcha. I also have um, a Cintiq where you can actually see and, and draw on, but I don't mm -hmm. use that one too often just because I feel like it's, it's just too too big and too large. And um, it, it's not cheap, but, you know, <laughs> I, I use my my regular one even more. Yeah, it's funny how, you know, the the tools I, at my my wife, Anna, as you know, she's she's very uh, mouse heavy. Like I've tried to get her to use a tablet, but it just it doesn't work for her workflow. And yeah, and so it, it has to work for you and serve your purpose to be as efficient as possible. And sometimes a mouse, just the ease of use to be able to do everything with it is is a lot mm -hmm. easier. Right. Definitely. And Hooray, mouse people. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Are you guys mouse people or tablet or yeah, please. hybrids? Looks like Ted. We got Ted. Beta, Bida, it seems like he's a mouse person. Let's see, who is a who is a tablet person and who is a or who's a little bit of a hybrid? We got a lot of people in the chat today. Um, hey, Susan, I'm just trying to let you do your thing. It seems like we we're getting some comments here. There we go. Let's see. Um, so I'll quickly mention this and then we can look at the chat. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this mask is again, not perfect. It's going to need a lot of fine tuning, but what I'm going to do now is invert it because with a mask, right? As you guys probably know, white reveals black conceals. So I'm just going to press control I on windows command on the, on the Mac to invert. When you do that, sometimes you might see like little mistakes you didn't see earlier. So like now I'm seeing that I didn't fill with white in these areas. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool to, to select that and fill with white backspace and delete. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, control and backspace on Windows command delete on the Mac and there it is. And what you can do is hold con the control key and click on the layer thumbnail to load it. Now, if you wanna be super fancy, you can press control alt and the number six command option and number six and that will load it. You see this number here, control six? Yeah. Yep. You add the alt key or the option key okay. and it just loads that selected channel as a selection. So if I were to press Control Alt 2, it would load the bright pixels because that's what the RGB is showing here. And if I wanted to load the red channel, Control Alt and the number three, Control Alt and the number six is the one we just made. Now I can go back into my RGB composite and click on the layer mask and there it is. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, what are people saying in the chat? It seems like we have, uh, Matthew says he feels like he has more control with the tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, Rajesh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I'd like to be a better tablet person, but someone stole my digital no. pen. That's always a shame. Uh, Marsha was a tablet waiting to install new drivers for an old tablet. Uh, let's see where else. It seems like we got a couple hybrids mixed, primarily mouse with a little mm -hmm. tablet. So definitely, certainly a mixed bag uh, of people using tablet or mouse, but um, yeah, it's, it's always interesting to see the workflow of every, every other creator and, and you know what works for certain people and what doesn't. That's right. Um, here's a trick. I don't know if Lisa's still in the chat, but I actually learned something a few years ago from my good friend, Lisa Cardney, who we were just talking about at the beginning of the of the stream. So this is um, fringing uh, this white halo around selections. Let me show you one way of removing that. But before I do that, actually, let me, um, I think. So I distracted might just... by his muscles. Yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're too, they're too huge. Yeah. This is actually a self-portrait, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, this is Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is what he really looks like when this he's is not what on I, Adobe. Yeah, this is why I'm wearing a sweater. I don't want to intimidate <laughs> people. Um, but anyway, so what I did there is just fine-tune the masks, smooth it out a little bit. But what I really wanted to show you is this technique. I learned it a few years ago from Lisa Cardi, and I was like, I cannot believe that, that, you know, that filter was in there. So if you go into filter, other, minimum, this filter will contract or expand the mask. I like to go into the roundness option. 
um, because that allows you to work with decimal points. You notice how I have 1.5 pixels. The squaredness only lets you do whole numbers. So I like the flexibility of just, you know, fine tuning this in. So notice how it's just pushing those pixels in. And at some wow. point, the, the fringing will be gone. And that's what you want. And notice that it looks pretty good. The hair looks terrible, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, what I can do now is go in here, double click on the mask. And then with the refine edge tool, I can try to salvage this. We'll see what happens. And I, just, I told you guys that this is going to be a very challenging part of the image. That's not too bad. I mean, it, it's good for, for what this section of, of his head looks like, but it's, it's terrible otherwise. Right. Um, I'll press okay. And you know what? I can live with this for now and then we'll keep working on the composite and maybe I can hide it with like some lightning or some debris. And then in some cases, we will have to come in and, and refine it further. But for now, don't spend too much time on these little small details because, like I said, they could be hidden or they might work with the background. You never know. So just don't spend so much time on these details that you may need uh, and may end up not using. So for now, we'll leave it. So this is my image here. And I can just click and drag it into, actually, uh, this file name is so long <laughs> that I couldn't see the other tab. <laughs> so I can click and drag it there. And yeah. um, no, I'm not going to save this because it's already, actually, I'll just press cancel. And I don't want to say no until I know for sure it's already on my, my Adobe Live. There it is. Um, I'll convert it into a smart object and then Control-T, Command-T to transform. Here's a tip. If you... Uh, one, if you press Control T Command T to transform and you can't see the transformation handles, you can press Control Zero on Windows, Command Zero on the Mac, and it'll zoom out and you'll see the transformation handles. And then you can scale it out like so. And then you can press Control Zero again, and boom, it comes right back um, after you scale it because it'll zoom to the transformation handles. So I can place him here and then scale him accordingly, like so. And you know what? I want them to be higher in the frame, but you know, I don't have enough room because I want his whole body to be in the frame. Okay. I don't want it to to disappear, you know, like cut him off like that. So, you know, this is this is more where I want him really. And if you notice, let me close this. If you notice on the actual composite that I did for today, I left them when that way down here and I kind of don't like that. <laughs> so um what I'll do is I'll do mm -hmm. something that I wasn't planning on doing, which is we'll see if it works. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to extend this with the um, crop tool. You can extend a canvas with the crop tool. And I'm just going to select the bottom half and just fill edit content aware fill. And we'll see what the content aware fill does. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to look OK. So we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Um, oh, wow, it's not feeling anything. Why not? What did I do wrong? See, sometimes uh, I, I don't even know what's wrong. Um, not sure about that. Let's, I'll try something else just because that didn't work for me. So here we go. I don't, I don't want to have to deal, figure it out. So what I'll do is I'll just um, press Control Shift C, Control Shift V. The reason that I'm adding the Shift key is because I wanted to copy the transparent pixels. If I just select the layer and press Control C and Control V, oh, actually, never mind. I copy the whole thing. But <laughs> oh, wait, 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 no, never mind. Um, if I make a selection and I press Control C, Control V, yeah, see that? See how it added the, the white pixels? See right, that right, right there? Yep, yep. I didn't want to add the white pixels. I just wanted the transparent ones. Okay. So I had to add the shift key to that when I'm copying. Gotcha. Yeah, cool. So I'm just going to, you know, try to make this work. Yeah, I think we can make this work. Um, yeah, because you don't need too much. You just need a little bit to, and it seems like maybe with that final final color grade that you have on there, a lot of that could be, you know, could be darkened. Some of those shadows can sort mm -hmm. of hide what's going on there at the bottom. Oh yeah, and 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 if you remember, there's like debris and stuff there. See that? So yeah. you know, we're gonna be able to hide it. I just need I just need to have something on here that covers it, or like in case you know, in case a little little piece shows. You know, Sean, it. I'm uh, I'm trying to get some questions here in the chat. Hey, Suze, is you're working? Sorry yeah. to get you off here. No, Sean no problem. wants to know, do you follow the idea that people shot straight on should have the horizon around the shoulders? Um, well, I mean, I mean, let me think of how I can answer that. So I guess, I guess I'll answer your specific question and then I'll explain it. No. <laughs> okay. And, um, 
I, I think that the horizon line should be wherever the horizon line is of the actual photo. Otherwise, the, the composite doesn't work. You do have a little bit of, you know, leeway on, on that. If, you know, and sometimes you'd have to work with whatever your client, art director, boss says. Um, but if you have complete flexibility, I think that you should place a horizon line where it should be. In other okay. words, at the eye level of, of wherever the camera was when the photo was shot. But, you know, nothing is carved in stone. You can take artistic liberties and, and do whatever you want. Right. That's a that's a that's a very good political answer there. I hope. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. You know, this is yeah. this, this, this doesn't have to be perfect, but, yeah, you but know, that's, you get... that's actually already looking a lot better. You know, you can look at that and and with a few adjustments. Uh, so to move to remove some of those harsh lines, you're just adding a layer mask to to that transparent layer that you duplicated and just kind of softly, softly mm -hmm. brushing those harsh lines out. Correct. That's exactly right. Gotcha. And, you know, again, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll need to fine tune more later. Maybe not. I don't know, but for now, you know what, that looks pretty good. I'll save it, close it and we'll see what we got. Oh yeah. This is going to work. Oh Let's, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can place them here and now he's much higher. And then when I bring in that oh, debris awesome. pretty soon, it will be great. So this is our main character. This is the, whoopsie daisy. This is the background. That's something I'm trying to bring back guys. Whoopsie daisy, so help me out. <laughs> can you make that a thing? Whoopsie daisy. Whoopsie daisy, yeah, or daisies, yeah. You can, you can do singular or plural, up to you. Now he looks not only super jacked, but a lot taller. So as if this guy couldn't get any bigger, now <laughs> That's he's right. uh, enormous. Um, let's now work with some of this debris here, this pile of rubble. Um, same thing, you know, like there's, you can, you can select this however you want. Um, I think that for this case, the same technique would probably be the one that will give me the best results faster. So um, image, apply image, and I'll do that several times. Image. Apply image again. Remember, I have multiply. If I if I had screen, it would make things brighter. So multiply just makes things darker. And I'll do it a few more times. Image, apply image. There we go. Maybe one more time. I don't know. Image, apply image. And that's looking pretty good. Um, I think we can get away with one more. Image, apply image. There you go. That looks pretty good. Actually, you know what? I think if I just keep going, I think I would just do the whole thing. That's pretty good. Um, and then I can go into image adjustments levels and just make sure that I crush the whites and then any area that is not black here, I can just select with the lasso tool and make it black by filling with the background color, control backspace, command delete on the Mac, control D to deselect. And I'm going to invert the selection, control I, command I on the Mac. I said selection, I should have said channel. So I'm going to invert the channel, control I, command I on the Mac. And then I can load it by using that super fancy shortcut I told you guys about earlier, control alt six, because we have a little number six here. You see that in the channel, in the blue copy. And I can go into my layers panel there. Um, you see how it's red here? The reason yeah. that's red is because I didn't click on RGB. So I'm just, you click on RGB and then go into a layers panel and there you go, it's not red anymore. And that looks pretty good, I think. And I'll convert this into a smart object. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I could be flexible and change my mind later. I think you were talking about that earlier about working non-destructive, James. That's that's yep. what I'm doing yep. there. Absolutely. And here it is. And the reason that I can't see anything is because it's probably a giant image. So remember, Control T to transform. That's Command T on the Mac, and then Control Zero, Command Zero to zoom out and see the transformation handles. And here we are. And this is totally up to you. You know, I'm just going to like maybe put rubble like on this side. I don't know, something like this. Remember, we're trying to hide his feet. They were, you know, kind of messed up there. Uh, here's another keyboard shortcut for you. If if you have the move tool selected, hold Alt on Windows option and the Mac and click and drag and you'll duplicate the layer. So ah. it moves it and duplicates it. So now okay. I'm just, I'm just a, trying I to did not know you could do that. There you go. Learn something new every day. Oh, I'm learning a lot today, Jesus. I feel <laughs> like you are a wizard in Photoshop and it's very, uh, it's interesting to watch the process, the, the process of you actually, you know, talking through it, uh, the, your ability to speak so elegantly to the shortcuts as well, because all those shortcuts are, you know, they sound really fancy, but they are a time saver. And the more obviously you do this, uh, professionally and, and people in the chat that are doing it professionally, they really saves you time and, and money in the end. So. Definitely. Uh, it's a huge, huge savior.
you know and you actually bring up a good point um you know saving you time and money like a lot of times um you know a lot of times you might watch i don't know like might go down the street and see a poster or something and you're like oh my god this art is terrible they didn't really you know i could have done a better job and i tell people you never really know the skill of the artist just by looking at at like a piece of work because a lot of times they only have say an ad budget for an hour of work so you have to right. you know make something within that hour you know so it's not really the quality of the person it's more of like well did they have more than an hour to do this did they have the budget um right, right. A, a friend of mine and, and this it was a, an interesting point uh, a friend of mine who some of you guys may know mark keeps who is uh, an adobe max speaker we were talking about the best way of and i forget what it was something about doing something with hair and he brought up a really good point that i didn't think about he basically said yeah that the way that you're describing it is probably better it also takes twice as long so do you have the budget for that <laughs> and right. i'm like hmm that's a good point is somebody going to pay me an extra two hours of work just to you know make it marginally better you know right who knows yeah so it, no absolutely i uh that's a we have a question actually about hair which I know, uh, Jesus, you touched on a little bit, but um, Fairy wants to know how to remove mm -hmm. white white hair fringing, um, which I we'll, think we'll you touched on. But... Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. So, I mean, this is what it's looking like here. Gotcha. Um, I don't want to necessarily start working on the hair just yet because I, I am hoping that I'll be able to hide it. But to answer your question, Fairy, you really can't. You know, white hair with white fringing, is, is, is you can't. So you want to do one of two things. You can just paint over it, like, you know, create a layer on top of it. And I guess I'll do a little bit of that now. And, you know, just, just paint it, paint over it like that, or, you know, what a darker color, maybe, or maybe, maybe even darker, I don't know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever looks good, right? Um, or just completely delete it and hide it and hope that nobody <laughs> notices, or find a different photo that has similar hair and then composite that in something that it's easier to mask and and you know adjust it so that it looks like his hair so one of one of the three one of those three but um, i mean one one other question for you on on that uh addition could you also um i know there's probably a million different kinds of brushes that you can use or download you know brush packs um, mm -hmm. could you find packs that are more catered to you know like hair strokes and actually like paint yeah. some of that stuff in afterwards De definitely so we'll take a quick break and i'll show you guys something um if i i know i have a photo of this lady here and i i always use her picture because she has great hair for this example <laughs> um let me just find her um where is she there she is so there's this uh lady here uh also an adobe stock image and what you can do is find an image like this where the her where the hair contrasts well against the background so mm -hmm. you know you can just crop that out and then basically use the same technique we've been looking at, you know, just create a new layer or a new uh, channel, go into image, uh, apply image, and then maybe crush the whites with levels, something like that. have to make the sound effect or it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that, right? And, you know, you can spend more time fine tuning it, but we'll call this good for now. And you know what I said that James, but then I noticed like a little boo boo, so I have to fix it <laughs> here at the bottom. Anyway, cool. We'll call that good. Yeah, close. So we have we have enough. that trying to hit right. Close enough. Um, I'm gonna load it, the channel as a selection, and just create a new solid color fill layer. Make it black. Seeing that I didn't invert it, this is why I was inverting it earlier with the other example. So I'll press Control I and Windows Command I on the Mac to invert, right? So now I have that strand, those strands of hair there. What I can do now is just so you can see what I have, actually, I'll create a, a white solid color. So th that's what I have, right? I can now go into edit, um, define brush preset, and I can just call this hair. There it is. And when I select my, my brush tool at the very, very bottom, you can see the hair thing that I just created. And I'll create a new document so you can see a new document, create, and I don't know why it's so long like that, but it is what it is. Let me just make this larger by tapping on the right bracket key. And now I have a brush that paints that. See that? Oh, wow. So I, so I have this brush and it paints hair like that. Obviously, this is not going to work well on this composite. That's not what his hair looks like, but I could come in and create a new layer um, with this icon here. It'll bring up the brush settings and I can click on the flip X so I can flip it in the X axis. Let me space it out so you can see. See that flip X? Now mm. it's in the X axis. And then I can press the arrow keys on the keyboard to rotate it, you know, and then I could click, you know, once I think find the appropriate size, I could click boom right there. And oh my bring God. This, so good. Bring, bring this down and see that? Yeah. Yeah. 
and then I can just create like a mask around it. Boom, you know, and obviously spend a little more time fine tuning. You know, this could probably work actually. I'm not leaving. Wow. <laughs> I that like actually, it. that's pretty cool. It's very, yeah. It's like you a know? little mullet. It's like a little mullet in the back of his head. Yeah. You know, so, so that's one of the ways that you can paint in hair if you want it to. And again, you, you can do, you guys can do this. Like, let me open up a new window here. Uh, stock.adobe.com. And what you could do is you can go and type in hair, uh, actually hair isolated. Isolated is a good word. Isolated just means that it'll be up against the, you know, solid background and you can just make sure that you're under the free section and then you can look for, you know, hair, you know, like this will be a good one. See that you can mm. make a nice brush out of that one. You know, maybe this one too. She's got curly hair. That'd be great. Oh, this one's even better. See that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can just you know create your own brush library for of hair, and then just do what I just did there. And you you don't have to worry about masking so much because it'll be impossible to mask everything. But then you know this looks pretty good. Obviously, we spent a little more time fine tuning it and maybe distorting the image so that it really match the the model right there like maybe something like that looks even better you know it, it'll look great in a composite when you start applying all these different elements on top of it but you know that you is that is really really cool yeah you will never get that selection you know especially with a, a, right. a blonde hair like him up against the white back, background right. maybe if his hair was up against a black background maybe but not up against the white background yeah cool very cool all very, right very cool. so where were we um we were oh yeah with the debris so here, um, okay, here's a trick for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna put everything into a group, Control G, Command G on the Mac, and to select multiple layers, just hold Shift and click on multiple layers. Or if you wanna skip a layer, hold Control and click, and then you skip a layer. Um, but I place these layers um, into um, a group, I'll call it Rubble. I don't know if I spelled it correctly. No need to spell it correctly. Um, I'm a bad speller, that's why I decided to do graphics, guys. <laughs> That's but, why you're um, in the creative. That's why you're in the creative field. <laughs> yeah. If you create a new, oh my God, there's been so many times, James, where I go back into something I wrote like, you know, five years ago on my website or anywhere. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I gotten better at writing because I do it so yeah. much now. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that went out like that. <laughs> but we're too excited as creatives to uh, yeah. spell anything correctly. We just need to get to the next idea, the next mm -hmm. project. So we skip over that part of it. Definitely. Um, so with the curves adjustment layer over everything, notice how it's, well, two things. I'll show you two tips. So this one is going to look ugly, but it'll help me prove a point. So that looks terrible, right? When you make an, an adjustment with the curves adjustment layer, you inadvertently add saturation to the image. Sometimes you don't want to do that. So I like to change the blending mode from normal to luminosity. See the difference? Mm. Look at that. Saturated. Look at his arms and the, and the cape. Luminosity. See that? So I just want to make it darker. I don't want to add saturation. Gotcha. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is I just want to affect uh, the rubble. So yeah, sure. I can create a, you know, a layer mask, right? And, and then, you know, delete this one and add a layer mask and boom, there it is. It's only affecting the rubble. But what if I change my mind and I want to move the rubble somewhere else and the layer mask doesn't match. You have to create a whole new layer mask. So too, too much work. So what you can do instead is not is don't use a layer mask. Select the group and notice that the default blending mode for the group is passed through. If you just change it to normal, the layer mask or excuse me, the adjustment layers in that group will only affect the contents of that group. So it's almost like creating a clipping mask for the group. So just change gotcha. the blending mode to normal and, and there you go. And what I can do now is reset this and then just make these darker, you know, they probably have a lot of saturation. So I'll just hue and saturation, desaturate and maybe shift the hue. I don't know, something like that. And again, we can come back and fix those also. Um, these are closest to the camera. So we need to blur them a little bit, um, you know, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, not that much, you know, and the reasons that they're smart objects, is I can always transform them or apply the, you know, change my mind with the blur, whatever I think looks good. And I can also do the same thing for this one, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, maybe not so much, it's a little bit closer to him, so less of a blur, something like that. And I think that's looking pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing how just the subtle, just the subtle blur obviously is how that photo would have been shot. Obviously, if he's sharp and in focus like that and the background's out of focus, then you're you're gonna have that foreground be uh, a little bit blurry mm -hmm. and out of focus as well. So it's important, mm -hmm. you know, although compositing is this endless 
process where you can get super creative, it's important to remember sort of the logical uh, elements of a photograph and how those things would yeah. be shot, right? And, and here's a suggestion for Adobe. We're talking about lenses, James, and I'm sure you know a lot about this. You're a filmmaker, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, you know, it would be super cool if we had like a, a an, an anamorphic blur background so we can get the not not just the bokeh but the bokehs that are oval rather than the perfect circles ah uh, cool. yes yes that would be incredible so yeah. um take they're a note. listening take yeah yeah they're, jacob <laughs> yeah take a note take note please jacob talk to your people um <laughs> yeah our people will talk to your people yeah yeah um let's let's continue um you know what we're working with all this like rubble and stuff let's now look at my other library i have here uh asset this one here i have i don't even know what this is what is this this is an explosive powder up against white background super cool and again these are all free adobe stock you can go to photoshop trainingchannel.com slash four to see a list of all the assets that i've downloaded um, at the moment, I don't know if you'll, I don't know if you know this, um, James, but as far as I know, the Adobe stock assets that are free will continue to be free. So I don't know when people will be watching this, but at least for today, they're yeah, free. Yeah, for today, I, I cannot speak <laughs> for on the behalf future. of Adobe, but I know that the ones yeah. that are free are free now, and there are a lot of them. Uh, yeah, some incredible assets, and I mean, the idea of being able to use libraries this seamlessly and this easy—it's uh, something that everyone using Photoshop should be taking advantage of because the ease of creating projects, sharing libraries with, you know, co-creators or clients or, you know, employees is huge. Definitely. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Cody Bear, for adding that link to the chat. And thank you guys for keeping the chat up. Uh, any questions, continue to ask them. I know we are plugging right away here. Jesus is dropping a world of knowledge uh, today for us in Photoshop. We're working on this this insanely awesome Thor movie poster with this incredibly jacked man. So if you know this man, please uh, send him our way. But yeah. seriously, ask some ask some questions, guys. Stay engaged in the chat. Uh, you know we have we have quite a bit of time still. Definitely. So what we're gonna do now is just mask this out. And I know you're going to be surprised, James, but we're going to use the channels panel for this. Oh, surprise, yeah. huh? Yeah, so, so this is interesting, right? This is actually a good example. So like, I really want, I don't really want so much of that, the, like the cloud, I want more of the actual debris. But this one, notice that the blue channel actually has more contrast with the cloud and the background than the green channel, the cloud is much, dimmer and i think right. i like that better so i'm going to duplicate the green channel so that's why i always look at all the channels just to see which one gives me the one that i want so i want a little bit of the cloud but i want more of the actual debris so that's why we're going with this so then i can click this and drag a, that's a that's an interesting point that i just want to hit on too jesus is that you know obviously in these going into these channels it, which is a very common uh way to you know mask out these uh images and these elements you have to have an idea and obviously in your head with each one of these elements, you have a, an idea of what part of that image you want to actually bring into your composite. So it's not like a one size fits all every time you go into your channel and do this frequency separation, you're going to pick the same channel. It's based on what you're looking for creatively, mm -hmm. right? Right, exactly. And, and, and I'm glad I had this example because, you know, by watching, you would have made the assumption, just duplicate the blue channel for everything. That's right. not always true. Like you said, it depends on what you want to do. Yeah. Cool. So in this case, see now, so what I did here with the black point, I just made those darker pixels really, really dark, which is the debris. And then basically with this slider, I can now control like the smoke cloud. So maybe something like that, where it's still still there, but not as, as overtaking as it, it was. I can press OK. And at this point, you can make a decision, right? You can either um hold control on windows command on the mac and click to make that selection and you can create a layer mask if you want and remove the background and keep that brown um debris there or you can create a selection and then just do a solid color fill layer and then you can select whatever color you want so it depends on on what you want to do so um in this case why don't we keep this and see how that works so yeah. i'll convert it into a smart object <clears throat> and I'll drag it onto my composite here. Where is my composite? I have too many layers open. Let me just close some of these. Oh yeah, we don't need her hair anymore. <clears throat> yeah, are you pretty, uh, it seems like you're very organized when you work with your layers. So are you pretty, do you try to just continue to make sure layers are named, files are saved, 
and you know everything is appropriately yeah so, so the short answer is yeah obviously as i'm working now we are you know we have a time constraint so I'm, I'm not naming everything as i would but i try to keep everything organized especially if somebody else is going to see the file then i definitely try to be more organized right than i would on my own but yeah so this is what we have here and this is just you know maybe there's a lightning strike or something you know he's the god of thunder so then you know maybe i don't know there's like a lightning strike or something there's debris there and it's you know coming up like so and you know like this is all subjective right whatever looks fits your eye and I think that maybe we need to blur this. So filter, blur, motion blur. And then, you know, let's see, what angle would this be going at? I don't know, something like that. Yeah, that seems about right. You know, something like that. And you can decide the intensity of this blur. And I think that this looks pretty good, but I don't like the color. So I'll do a human saturation, clip it to the layer below and just desaturate it just because I don't want it to be so brown. Maybe something like that. And I think that looks much better. Right? Oh, I don't yeah. know what you think. Yeah, yeah, James. much better. Plus it's not as distracting. I think <laughs> your your goal is not necessarily to have your your eye drawn to that debris. Your goal is to have it drawn to the subject of the, of the composition. So all exactly. of that is helping to guide the eye towards the center and not have distractions that are like, hmm, that seems a little out of place. What did they do there? Definitely. And, and you know what? Here's a, so now, now I'm thinking out loud. I like what I did here. And I'm just going to remember, I just brought down the saturation to about 74, 75. So what I'll do is I'll actually delete this layer and I'll call this like rubble one or whatever. And I can just go into image adjustment, hue and saturation and bring it to negative 75, more or less. Or we had it before, it looks the same, but now that adjustment, it's in the actual smart object. And the reason that I did that is so that I can duplicate it and you know, move this one to this other side, like so, maybe make it larger. Because I want, you know, maybe, you know, it's coming off this side, maybe this side's stronger. I don't know. Like this, something like this. And I need to I change the that. need to change the angle of that motion blur as well to match that side, you know, it's not going to be going the same angle. Um, and also if I wanted to from here, I could also adjust, you know, maybe it's a little bit darker. See that? That's why I did it in a smart object in a separate layer. And I can duplicate it one more time and I can place one behind them, you know, just to give the, the composite like more dimension. Like, so something else is going on behind them, you know? So it's just know. like, so, so amazing to me. And so incredible, you know, you can continue to build on top of these and just compositing in general is, is just amazing. And it's, it's inspiring me right now to get into Photoshop and I haven't been <laughs> in there in a little while. So it's, uh, oh, hopefully, you definitely should. hopefully anyone in the chat, um, I'm sure we're getting some people inspired by, uh, just this stream, but it is endless. And you know, there, there comes a certain point where you're like, okay, that looks good enough. And let me, you know, continue to move on. But it's mm -hmm. just, it's so cool to watch and, and so cool to see it come together. So I'm just blurring it now um, even more because that, that one's further behind him. We were talking about depth of field earlier. Um, there you go. So, you know, up to you, you can fine tune this all day long, you know, and decide what works for you. But maybe something happened behind them. So there's lightning strikes going on all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. So what do we do next? Oh, OK. So I, I know what to do next. So I'm going to go in into my Thor layer here <clears throat> and I have this image here of this dude that is equally as jacked as I am. Oh, and this, oh, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think um, maybe you're a little, a little Thank larger. you, I appreciate that. You're yeah. too kind, way too kind. <laughs> and I really like the rim lighting on this guy. And mm. yes, you can, of course, you know, we we're talking about using the, the Wacom tablet, I have it right here. I could come in and I can start painting in, you know, um, a, rim light on this guy you know just just be a really really good artist and this you know just paint in a rim light and i can do a decent job and all that and, and you know the better, better you are at drawing then you know the better you'll you'll get that rim light in there but i actually think it's better if you have an opportunity to just composite it in because it's, it's going to look more real it takes more right. time maybe a little more skill but at the end of the day it looks better so if yeah, you have time yeah. why not and i would argue that drawing it it's it probably takes longer but you know it is well, and, it and is. if the yeah and if, if the photo was lit that way properly then you're you're mm -hmm. taking something that you're trying to fake what already exists so if you can 
I think if you can find it and it works for your for your image in this case, then uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just select um, his arm here, and I'm gonna. I always like to take more than one I need, just because it gives me flexibility in case I misjudge what I thought I would need. So Control C to copy. I don't need to add the Shift key now like I did earlier, and paste and Control T to transform, flip horizontal, and you know like maybe his like shoulder muscle here will be my reference point. Make sure that you enable the reference point right here. It's that little dot and you can just place it there and I can place that there. And now I can scale it accordingly. I'll bring down the um, opacity so that I could see what I'm doing here and scale that up, rotate it, scale it up even more something like that and that looks pretty yeah. okay and what i'll do now it, i mean there's so many things you can do at this point right you can um use a liquify you can use uh, transformations whatever you want so i'm going to clip that to the layer below um i just held alt on windows option on the mac and click in between the layers or Control alt g will also do the same thing and with this layer selected i'm going to go into filter liquify <laughs> i'm going to try to you know get those muscles in there properly if you guys are just joining us, uh, this is a self-portrait of Jesus Ramirez. Yes, it is. Thank you and so much. And his gigantic bicep and forearm. Yes. Uh, someone in the chat is wondering if they can take the torso. Yes. <laughs> hey, these uh, assets are free, so you can do whatever you'd like to that torso. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, take it take it home with you. It's a souvenir. There you go. Free of charge. Um so, you know, I'm just trying to get the muscles in here, you know, just try to make them match the original. Now, is your is your goal to just match this so that you can take the rim light of mm -hmm. this arm or are you yes. actually trying to match the arm up with? Oh, no, it, it, okay. just just a rim light. Just gotcha. a rim light. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and again, I'm going faster than I, than I normally would just because of the time constraints. But, you know, it's going to look good enough. You know, like you you're going to be, I hope, at the very least, somewhat impressed. Oh yeah. Um, maybe not extremely, just a little bit. Anyway, so th th I think this will be good. Yeah, um, that, we, have that's a good. we have a question in the chat from Robert. Um, have you used sequence for select from menu anytime? Sequence not... from select from menu. I don't, in the sequence, select menu. Sequence for select. Uh, yeah, Robert, I'm not sure. We yeah, understand not... the question here. Can you be a little more specific? We Let can me try to answer that for you. Jesus, have you used sequence for select from menu anytime. I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about a layer stack, Robert? Let, let us know in the chat. Cool. So the next step is once you get this lined up, uh, you can press Control Shift U, Command Shift U on the Mac to desaturate, change the blending mode to screen, and then just crush the blacks. And actually I can do this um, image adjustment levels and then just crush the black so that we just have the highlights. See that? See how I'm, I just mm -hmm. have a highlight now? Yeah, yeah. See my my rim lighting there. See yep. that, and then with the and then I'll hold um, create a layer mask, and I can just hide the contents of that, that I don't else. want, you know. And gotcha. actually, you know what I do want? I do want a little bit of of the sweat on this. You see how there's some sweat there now? Oh yeah, yeah. See that? That's cool. And you know, obviously, it's not not every piece is going to work, but that's okay. I'm just you know, I just want most of it to work so before and after see that hmm hmm cool wow yeah that's great and maybe even 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 more maybe and the idea with that that uh you know rim light and the the um that contour on his arm is that that light source is going to be uh, from the lightning, or is that light source going to be from you know the deeper background of your image? Uh, uh, both, and and even uh, in reality, I mean, you can see what I did here. It, in, in reality, is to create some separation between mm. the background and foreground, so it's not so flat. Right. Um, so in in this particular case, I mean, you were asking the right question. Where's that light source coming from? It could be anything. Yeah. But um, ideally, you know, maybe I have a lightning strike or something on this side. Cool. But what I was really thinking about is to create some separation between the foreground and background, just so that it's not so flat. Gotcha. Um, but but yeah. So so there it is. 
And, you know, I think, I think it looks pretty, pretty good. Also what I did in, in this particular uh, image, oh, I didn't save it on my Adobe Live um, poster uh, uh, library. I had a photo um, in here of a guy Oh man, I'm gonna be so disappointed if I can't find it. Um, I, it looks like I didn't save all the images into my Adobe um, creative library. There was another image that I took of um, another person. Oh man, okay, well, it doesn't really matter, but I'll show you guys what that looked like on the, on, on the final image. Um, there was another person that I went in and, and, and stole um, it's not the smart object I wanted to open. Basically, did the same thing. I went in there and I stole the person's um, head. Where is it? It's one of these. Oh, there you go. See that highlight? It's it's from some, from another photo. Yeah, same, yeah, same yeah, technique. Yeah. Same technique. And you know what? Since I have it here, I'll, I'll you know steal it again. But I mm. I don't. I didn't save that image, but it was another free asset. Um, oh, well, it is what it is. But I, I just wanted an extra highlight on his head that looked realistic. So I just stole another piece of, of somebody else's highlight on their head using exactly the same technique. So we won't worry about that in this case, but just know that you know, you could do that as well. Um, Jesus, is there any way to increase the size of the thumbnails uh, in that library? Or is that as large as they can go? This is, this is as large as they can go, I believe, unless they've added something new that I'm not aware of, but I believe this is the largest they can go. You can create, you can increase the thumbnails uh, in the layers panel under the panel options, I believe, yeah. Um, you can change those thumbnails here, but on, on the libraries, libraries, I believe that's as, as, as big as they go. Gotcha. And if I'm wrong, somebody can correct me in the chat. Um, the question about smart objects. A smart object is a container that can hold one or more layers, and it allows you to apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. In other words, you can apply an edit and remove it completely later if you want to, or just make a minor adjustment or major adjustment, whatever you want to do. It just allows you to work non-destructively. Jesus does not have a dictionary in front of him. That's just because he's extremely <laughs> smart and can memorize this in his sleep so well i don't know about smart but i can definitely <laughs> memorize hey man I'm, I'm actually working with approximately 10 percent less brain than the last time yeah. i was on adobe live so, so yeah so you're just <laughs> imagine what you'd be doing with that that extra yeah 10 yeah right oh god yeah um, let me see um the next thing i'm going to add in here is i have this vintage um scratch grunge overlay and notice one thing this is a grayscale image if you open up a grayscale image in photoshop sometimes you may not get all the filters and everything that you want to do some things will be like you know disabled so you can go into image mode and rgb and once it's an rgb image you can do whatever you want with it and what i'm going to do with it is i'm going to go into view pattern preview press ok and with the move tool you can see that this is a uh, Oops, I got to convert it to a normal layer. You can see now that this will become a pattern. I'm going to create a seamless pattern. And all I need to do is make sure that I don't have any seams. So there's so many ways to, to fix that. I don't know. We can use the patch tool. So I can select the patch tool and just move to a different area like so. That didn't work. Um, let's try something different. <laughs> let's try, let me see. Uh, we can try the clone stamp tool. Um, yeah, so oops, whoopsie daisy. I didn't want to do that. There it is. Whoopsie daisies. Yeah. So here we go. I'm, I'm totally, I'm trying to bring it back. I, I don't know if it was ever a thing, but I'm trying to bring it, it back. It can be a thing. Anything think. can become a thing. Yeah. I mean, like the banana tool became a thing, I think. Yeah. Someone was Photoshop. asking that in the chat, actually. Uh, and yeah. Anna, Anna has the banana. Anna banana. Yeah. Um, so can you explain to those in the chat what this banana is? I definitely can. Um, remind me once I finish this, and then yes. I'll, I'll I'll come yes. back. So so I just with the clone stamp tool, I basically removed all the seams. I just didn't want any seams because I want a seamless pattern. And you can see that you know that's pretty seamless, right? And right. I know there's some giant areas with nothing in it, so I can just you know copy some some debris here. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it there doesn't need to be any any harsh lines. Cool. That looks pretty good, right? Like there's no real seams. Great. So now I can go into edit. Um, actually, no, I don't want to do that yet. I can remember that keyboard shortcut I told you about earlier, control, alt, 
And then the number two that loads bright pixels, that's the keyboard shortcut. I just press control alt two command option number two, or in the channels panel, hold control command and click on RGB. With those okay. pixels selected, I can just go into solid color and choose black and boom, there it is. I have that. And maybe I'll duplicate it one more time to make it stronger. So it's, it's a stronger version of it. And I can go into edit, um, define pattern, and this will be my, um, what, what should I call it? I don't know, um, dirt pattern, dirt pattern, press OK, boom. So I can go back into my Thor image here and I can now over everything create a pattern that has that dirt, boom, there it is. And see that? I just wanted to create some pattern, some dirt that went all over his body, like so. See that? That's cool. Yeah. And that way, I don't, I don't have to paint it in or anything. It just goes in randomly. And then when I create a layer mask based on the on on, on the Thor here, over this pattern here, you get that result. Pretty cool. Now, if you want to be super fancy, you can um, rasterize this layer right uh double click to the side of the layer and then add like a bevel and emboss and then let me see can we even see that i don't know if you can see it can you not really um but you know if you can great if not then i guess not maybe add a drop shadow is that basic add... that's just essentially to try to you know bring it more into the environment of that it could be dirt on his body exactly right yeah. you know so some just... of that shadows and some of that contour a little bit yeah Yep, exactly. And, you know, you can just find, you know, wherever you think the light is going. I think the light's coming from the left, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, something like this. And then maybe for, for my color overlay, I can make that like a brown or something just to make it seem like dirt, you know. And you can now see a little bit of a highlight. See that? Mm. See that? Just a It's just a little subtle thing. Yeah. Yep. You know, just press OK. And now he's got dirt on him, you know, because he's been through battle, you know, he's got dirt all over his face, you know. Yeah, he's Which, been working, he's been working hard. And I mean, yeah. the, these are the, these are the subtle, subtle details in all of these compositions that really sell it too. You mm -hmm. know, like it's, you continue to add and stack these layers on top of each other. And the more and more you do, uh, it just sells that this is an actual, you know, it feels realer than, than what Definitely. we started with. Definitely like that. It feels realer. I like that. Realer. Who knows if <laughs> that's a word? I don't think that's a word. But you know what? That's another feels, thing we're, we're trying to bring more back. more real. Um, yeah. So at this point, what I like to do, you know, once I'm, I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, this is, this is looking pretty good. I kind of want to see what the final piece would look like. Um, what I like to do is we're nowhere near done, but I, I think I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, let me see what the final thing will look like. So I can press Control, Alt, Shift, E, Command, Option, Shift, E on the Mac, and I'll call this one final. And I'll right click and convert it into a smart object. And I'm gonna go into Filter, Camera, Raw, Filter. So now I'm going to apply the final um, effects that I would apply and see more or less how it's going to look. So for this one, I'll probably add contrast, maybe cool it just a tiny little bit, um, bring the shadows down, the highlights down. You know, this is completely subjective, of course. You know, he's, he's a rugged dude, so maybe increase the texture. Um, for my color mixture, I think I'm going to bring the saturation of the reds down. I don't want that tape to be so overwhelming. It's, it's a really bright red. I would maybe even make that cape darker um, for the his skin tone looks pretty good. So I'll leave that there. Everything else looks pretty OK. The image is still more saturated than I like it to be. So maybe bring down the, the saturation a, a little bit. Um, also, for the shadows, maybe I'm just going to add a hint of blue. Not too much, just a tiny little blue on there, just, just a little bit. And maybe make them make them darker as well. Under effects, I'm going to add a vignette, you know, just to kind of like set, you know, make it make it so that the 
photo is focusing on him just by, you know, adding a, a vignette. Something that you can do is go all the way to the left and then increase the highlights and see where the highlights start popping. In this case, just in the top. So you probably don't need it. Sometimes what the highlights uh, slider allows you to do is for highlights on the image to pop through the vignette. In this case, there's not that many highlights. So it doesn't make a difference really, but you know, you can, you can adjust that accordingly in your, in your images, something like this. And I feel like it still needs a little something here. So maybe, let me see, um, I don't know, maybe just add a little bit more of that blue and then we can continue working with it. So so yeah. that's more or less where, where I'm going, you know? Gotcha. And, and, are you, and would you typically, uh, this is, because I love the camera raw filter as well. That's how I, I would like to edit in there using a smart object. But do mm -hmm. you, does it, is it dependent on the project that you decide whether to use adjustment layers right here in your window? So adjusting curves, levels, brightness, hue, that kind of thing here, or do you just find it easier to use uh, the camera raw filter like that? Good question, James. So a combination of both. Um, as I'm working on the composite, I'll, as you've seen, I've been using some adjustment layers, but at some point I like to just take everything and work on it as if it were a single photo. It's like my finishing adjustments. So that's right. what this final one does, just to cool. bring it all together, you know? Um, so they were talking about the banana tool in the chat. So banana tool, if you go into edit toolbar, you'll, you, by default, you'll see three dots. If you go into the edit toolbar, um, you can hold the shift key and click on done, and that will add a banana. If you want to remove it, you can hold the option key and click on done. So shift, click on done, and you'll get a banana. And I think, um, Sean is in the chat, if I'm not mistaken. Let me know if you're in the cha uh, chat, Sean, who is the person who coined the Adobe Banana Club um, when I was doing the, the Adobe, Adobe streams Club. yeah, a, a while ago. Cool. Um, but anyway, so, so now that I know more or less where I'm going, I can start work, you know, just continue working. So what I'll do is a couple of things. I'm noticing that um, I'm not happy with a few things. So number one is if I go in here, his eyes are pretty dark and I kind of wonder, want his eyes to stand out a little more. So a quick trick you can do is just add a layer and on that layer, you can just, you know, with white, just add those highlights there, boom. And, and watch, I think it's gonna make a huge difference in the composite. Um, let's see, see that? See, it looks like now his eyes are like, you know, like mm. looking at us. <laughs> yeah. So I think it, it, it helps it's, it's, I don't know. I feel, I feel like it just brings it be together better. Um, let me close this layer. And what I'll do now is I'll close this one too. What I'll do now is I'll add a new layer above my Thor layer. I'll clip it below. And actually, I don't want to do it. I want to do a curves adjustment layer. So a curves adjustment layer, clip to the layer below. And then this one could be my uh, dodge. So I'll set it to luminosity and just make it brighter, boom, like that. And then hide the contents like so. Create another curves adjustment layer, call it burn, set it to luminosity and then make it darker like so. And maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. And then again, make it um, inverted to make it black. And now I guess I'll use my tablet now since I have it here. Um, we were talking about that earlier. Um, so what I can do now is with the brush tool, I can paint with white on each of these layer masks. So the burn one is basically doing what the burn tool will do, right? It, it's just going to make things darker. And I have pressure sensitivity. That's why it's taking me a while. And that's what I want. You know, just sort of like darkening this layer the way that I want. And again, I'm going super quickly here, but you get the idea. So see before and after, and then with the dodge, I can highlight certain areas, you know, that's probably yeah. too much. But even in those eyes, you know, that was one of the things that we were talking about brightening up and that's a perfect way to just touch that up a little bit. Definitely. Right. Bring those, bring those eyes a little sharper. Yeah. And uh, how much time do we have? Because I, I we're about uh, thirty, about forty minutes, uh, a little less than forty minutes. So let's say thirty-five minutes. Okay, so you're doing, cool. You're doing okay. All right, cool. So we have we have some time. So I can take a little more time. I just don't sure. want to spend too much time, you know, on on these details because I'm sure you do that with your uh, work as well with video. You can spend hours editing like two oh. minutes of video. 
you really, you really can, and you can go back over it. And, um, but it's, it's interesting to still watch and to watch the process and, and sort of how we've got to this point, I think going back to the tablet, uh, mouse discussion earlier, um, using a pen, uh, you know, a Wacom or how is it? Wacom, Wacom, Wacom. Wacom. So, yeah. Wacom tablet. I don't have one as you can tell, so I don't even know how to pronounce it properly, but this is a much easier way to really get in there and paint some of those, uh, you know, final details to really get these highlights to pop, get these darker areas of the image to start to craft the photo and the composition that you have in your mind. I love that. Like being able to darken that sky. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm doing now is adding, um, you know, different adjustment layers to kind of get my background. I feel I, uh, to where it needs to be. I felt that it was too bright. So I'm darkening it up um, to get back to the Wacom conversation for just a second. So the, regarding the pronunciation, I used to pronounce it Wacom and I got invited by Wacom, the company to do a presentation. Oh um, boy. And I'm up there for two hours calling it Wacom at the end of the thing. Oh no. The guy who hired me comes up and he goes, by the way, it's Wacom, not Wacom. So I mispronounced the company who hired me <laughs> for, a while, yeah. for two hours. Oh my goodness. I was like, oh God. Well, now I'll you'll never, never pronounce it uh, never. the wrong way again, and neither will never. I. <laughs> um, so I'm just adding, you know, some some blue into us too much. Now, I didn't really ask you this, Jesus, when we started, because we sort of got right into editing here, but um, I'll throw some questions your way yeah, that no I problem. have. But your initial thought process going into this specific edit um, you know, what's your method of collecting assets? Do you find that you like to get everything into one library first because you know what you're going to be working on and then sort of work from there? Or do you open up a composition and just start piecing things together to see what will fit? Like how's, how, what's your process like when you really start a piece like this? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely an idea. Um, so I did know that I, I want, cause I mean, the first thing that I did was I found this, this main character um, and I wanted to, find pieces that work with the idea that I had in mind. So, so after that, it was just finding images that worked with the idea that I had. And, and to be quite frank with you, looking for the right assets is probably what takes me the longest usually. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it, it's uh, everyone is very eager to get to work and get into Photoshop and start playing around, which is great. And it's a really good way to practice. But I think finding the right assets and again, like we sort of hit on this earlier, but um, to the point of finding assets that will work for the, the type of project you want to create or the type of composition you want to create is super important because, you know, you can work in Photoshop all day trying to make colors match and trying to add these layer masks. But if the assets don't really fit together naturally or look the part, you can be doing that forever and it not be the right asset. So I think that is a huge element that is often overlooked when we're doing these sorts of composites. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I learned a lot of that from Anna as, as it does take her quite a bit of time to find the, the appropriate assets to use. Definitely. And, and I, I think everyone in the chat, in the chat knows her wife, Anna McNaught. Yes. She is a fantastic artist and, uh, what, where can people find her work? Yes. Uh, for those that are in the chat, uh, Anna McNaught, uh, Anna McNaughty is her Instagram still. That was from years ago, but that is where <laughs> she shares the majority of her work. Uh, she has, gotten uh, pretty into the NFT space over the last year. So you can nice. find her work on Foundation and OpenSea as well. Um, and uh, on our on our travel site, Leave the Map. So that's, that's the company that my wife and I run together. And she is the Photoshop wizard like you, Jesus. And, and I she run the uh, photography and the video side of things. So we, 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 uh, we're a pretty solid team, I, I have I, to say. <laughs> I think you are. You guys are doing great. And um, what's your cat's name? Because I, I do, I seen all your TikToks, um, and you guys have a beautiful cat. She is great. Lucy is Lucy. our cat's name. She somehow just, she just veges in the van. Now that she has a house, she's like, screw the, <laughs> screw the van. I have so, yeah. I have like a five star hotel that I can go yeah, nap on any, yeah. any surface. Um, but yeah, she's, she's uh, been traveling with us uh, in the van on and off for about two, two and a half years. And uh, she's very easy to travel with, surprisingly. We've gotten a lot of questions about, you know, how difficult that is. I think for a dog, it might be a little harder. I know we know a lot of people who travel with dogs and have no problem, mm -hmm. but it's just an added element to, to deal with when you're when you're not in your comfort zone. Definitely. So um, 
just to give a, an update of what I'm doing, I was just working on adding highlights and shadows to, to this image. So notice it's, that just by darkening some, some areas or brightening some areas, he pops more. See his mm -hmm. muscles kind of show more. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So that's what I was doing. So what I what at this point, what I like to do is go uh, press control A, command A on the Mac to load everything as a selection, then control shift C to copy. And then now that everything's copied, I can go back into my final and just paste that in there. See that? See, this ah. is, you know, we can see like a progression. Oh, when wow. I close it and save it, you can see that that's looking much, much more like a, you know, grungy movie poster. Maybe at this point it's too blue. I can always come back and, and you know, make adjustments. Now I think it's it's too dark, you know? So this is why we work with um, the camera raw filter um, because now I have a better idea of where we're going and, and, you know, what we're doing. So I can, you know, adjust it accordingly obviously and there we go so and obviously it's not perfect but you know from where we started and and where oh we God. are i think it's a, a huge difference um what i'm gonna do now is work on the lightning so okay. i have these images here um why am i not seeing the lightning oh here it is uh, i don't know why i missed it earlier but what i'll do is i'll do something different i'll just place that on here and I can actually I'll make it larger. We'll start we'll start with larger lightning. Just that it covers the whole thing and then we can just adjust it accordingly. There you go. Rick uh Rick Adams in the chat asks, what is the name of this movie? Ooh, well, let us know in the chat. What do yeah, you guys think? I don't think? know. Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah. Let's let's yeah, come let up us... with some names. We obviously yeah. Th Thor is taken, so yeah. We gotta yeah. get a little more creative than that. But uh and the title of this image in uh ah. and so that might be a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Definitely. So I, I changed the screen, uh, the blending mode to screen, and then I'm going to go into image adjustment levels, and I'm just going to crush the blacks like so and adjust it accordingly. And maybe that's too much, but you know, whatever you right. think works best for your image, right? Something yeah, so, like so that. in this case, you didn't necessarily have to go in and apply those adjustments just because there was enough of that contrast in that lightning where you could oh, just for go sure. in and yeah. Yeah, and I kind of like that little ambient glow that it's leaving there. And it, I mean, it's just a good photo. Oh, and yeah. this is a part that I was talking to you before we started the stream about James, where I was considering using Adobe After Effects to create my lightning. Mm. But then I thought that might be too much if I go into After Effects and create the lightning, then bring it in. And I was like, I'll just find a photo of lightning. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, maybe uh, we, we're we still working on some stuff for tomorrow. So maybe we can... Maybe. Uh, Maybe, Maybe we can, we can dabble there. in some After Effects, but uh, I mean, this looks really, really cool too. This is not where I had where I positioned the lightning earlier, but I kind of like it there. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm, I'm gonna put it here. Um, I'm just gonna move my reference point here, and then just move this down so that it comes to the bottom here. We'll see how that looks. Oh Again. yeah, I like that. Oh like yeah, that. that looks sick. Then I can go into image adjustment, hue and saturation, and I can, you know, make it blue or something you know creates a lot of depth too just having that strike almost going right across the front of his his uh i don't know vest chest yeah plate yeah. i don't know whatever you call that his uh suit yeah his zoo suit yeah that's looking really really good yeah you mentioned uh the, the photo itself you know that it is a really strong photo and I think uh, as someone just watching you do this, I mean, again, for those in the chat, like reiterating the fact that um, obviously compositing is subjective, but having a good, strong photo to start with and to work with is really important. So whether whether you take that yourself as photographers or whether you are, you know, a compositor in Photoshop and you're looking for these assets, you know, finding these photos that are lit properly, are sharp already, are not out of focus, like makes your job a lot easier to at least start from ground zero rather than definitely fix a bad photo i completely completely agree and and this is why you know we were talking about earlier that the most time consuming part about this process at least preparing for it was you know just finding the right images yeah absolutely takes time takes time guys for perfection what was that line from the picture movie you can't rush art you can't you absolutely can't. And it, and it strikes no pun intended, but sort of pun intended. It strikes <laughs> at the most random times at like, you know, one in the morning, you might have some creative idea. Oh yeah. Get that tablet out, start 
start compositing in Photoshop, you know? Definitely. All right. So let's see here. We got it. We got a couple names for this, uh, this movie. Oh, what, what, what are some of the, the ones that are? We got sounding... Revenge, of the, Revenge of the Vikings, Thunderstruck. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. That's a good one. They're and all the, Enf- pretty... the Enforcer. I, I think, isn't that a movie already, though? It sounds like it. But what was the Revenge of the what? The Vikings. Oh, I like that. I like that. I would See, I would watch that. Yeah, The Enforcer yeah. is a Clint Eastwood movie. Oh, okay. So, all right. Can't take that one, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I just also added some lightning in the background. I know I didn't have it in the original. I guess I did. But, you know, it doesn't have to be the same. Um, something else that I did on, on that original image was on like above everything like where, where did i do it like right here above everything i just paint it with white in some areas like so just to make it seem like it was just brighter in those areas you know see that almost like almost like coming out of the clouds or yeah you know, something yeah that's cool see that right and then, so you know you can you feel free to brighten up whatever area you think needs to be brighter in your image you know there might be too many you know lightning strikes but that's fine um so again another way you can do what i did earlier was to uh, press uh i'll do the long way just to be, in case you forget select all so select all and then edit copy merge same thing as pressing Control a to select all and then Control shift uh c to copy all and then go back into the final, this one, paste it in there, save it, and we'll see what that looks like. Oh, that's looking pretty cool. Wow. So, wow. I think I may have too many lightning strikes, but that's okay. But, at, you know, at this point, all we need to do is just, like, really, like, look at our image and now start working on the small details. We have about 20 minutes or so. Yep. And then we can spend that time... Just, you know, like, look, look, you can see the, the hair is not looking that good. Um, I'm noticing that I don't have the right amount of um, grain. I actually would like for this to be a little grainier. So I can come in here and now just like really start fine tuning it and, and making it look as best as possible. But this is why I didn't want to work on all those smaller details earlier, because I didn't know what was going to show or not. Like, maybe mm-hmm. I didn't even need to add that extra space at the bottom here. I don't even know if it's showing, but, you know, I kind of needed to to be sure for that but anyway so i was talking about the the grain i'm noticing that we don't have enough grain for the style that i'm going for and for those of you that have been watching me on adobe live for a while you guys know that i like grain so oh i don't even have any grain no wonder i was was well, unhappy I'm a big fan of grain especially in something like this that like looks so grungy and gritty and yeah has that you know it's already dark it's already got that that blue cool tone so the grain is just another element that's going to continue to add to that that environment that- Definitely. Also, on um, with, with the not color grading with the color mixer, I can adjust the oranges and maybe like you know make his skin tone pop a little bit better. You know, just something that I I think looks good for the image. So I can definitely adjust. And yeah, maybe even just bring the saturation up of the orange a little bit. Yeah. 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 Something like that. So. Rick Rick in the chat is saying maybe mask the lightning behind the arm and the hammer. Yeah, that's a good idea. We can do that. So let, why don't we do that next? Sure. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a really cool idea. Great so we suggestion got a, there, Rick. Yeah. So here's the trick. This is why you want to name your layers. I didn't name my layers, but this is this is why you need to name your layers. You can right click on a point, and then you see a drop down with all the layers that are beneath that point. So I don't know which lightning strike that was. So ah. I'm just gonna guess and say it was that one, and we'll see. I was wrong. Oh man. See this waning we'll, layers. There we we'll go. Give, that one. We'll give you a pass for this one just because we knew that uh, we're t- we're crunched on time. But I'm, yeah. I'm sure when you're when you're comfortable at home in your studio, you are you're naming those layers. Mass, yeah, I spend most of my time <laughs> naming layers. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. I know the organization. There we go. That's a good suggestion, by the way. It's come at, kind of coming on the other side here, maybe. You know, that's, something that's cool. something like that. We, obviously, we can spend more time and, and get something that looks better, but I kind of like that. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. So that was before and after. See that? Yeah, good suggestion there. And you know what? I think I think I made a mistake in the sense that I didn't. I used like a hard edge brush, and I'm too lazy to repaint it. So what I'll do is I'll just make a selection here, 
filter, uh, blur, Gaussian blur, and I can just blur it a little bit. So it's, you know, so it's not I so, I gotcha. so sharp. Right. Cool. Um, I mean, there's a lot that we can fix. I'm just trying to see where I want to focus my time in. Um, let's see what I think I'll do now is I guess we can work on that on his hair. So that's, it's down here. Before we I do that, let me just make sure that I used all the images. Yep, I used all the images. And here he is. And I'll enable this layer here. And yeah, yeah, we definitely need to work on this. So I mean, again, like I said before, you know, it's gonna be very difficult because um, he is blonde and we're working with a white background. So there's definitely going to be areas that we're going to disregard you know, maybe areas that we paint over or, you know, we'll, we'll see what we do, but, you know, I'm just painting in the stuff that I do want to keep for sure. Cause a lot of these highlights were hidden um, because Photoshop thought that they were part of his hair when we were doing the masking process, but clearly they are part of him. He's got some great hair. I wonder what kind of shampoo he's using. Yeah. I could use some of that. <laughs> for sure definitely me too i mean so this is why it's important again like reiteration uh and just a reminder again to make sure you have this is obviously like basic photoshop 101 but just to reiterate it for for everyone here like making sure that everything is on a separate layer and a smart object so that in this case we're at the end you know you're at the end of the project and you're trying to finesse these details and you can still go back and tweak this original, you know, photo so that we can go in and really, uh, refine that hair instead of having something that we've destroyed layers ago. Exactly. Exactly. And you don't want to have to redo any work, especially if you're getting paid for your time. Yep. 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 If, a if a client is paying you for it, God know how to do it right. Exactly. And I, I think that's the real, um, difference that I had to learn when I was, cause I got pretty good at the software at an early age, but then I had to realize that talent wasn't everything like actually running a business, you know, or being part of a team, right. which was in my case to begin with is equally as important, if not more important than how good you are with the computer mm. or the work. Um, you know, just, you know, I remember er really early, I learned talent is not everything. You gotta be a part of it, learn how to be part of a team right. or learn how to be a business owner either or. Well, and when, as an editor, do you find that a lot of the naming conventions and staying organized in, in this professional setting, are you passing things off uh, to other compositors? So that's, that's equally as important to make sure that you give somebody a file that isn't complete, you know, a yeah, complete for mess, sure. right? For sure. For sure. It, because um, I don't know if you've ever been, been there, James, in the type of work that you do, but opening up somebody else's file and it being a complete mess and you having to fix it is... It's a complete oh nightmare and, and, you know, yep. you say yep. things to this person and maybe even their mother. Um, you instantly but, resent them as a, yeah. Human. Yeah. You're like, what is wrong with you? What is right. wrong with the psychopath? You know, right. like, but, but yeah, you, you definitely need to, um, it's also like, um, not, not just professional courtesy because in a lot of times it's expected. So it's not like, oh yeah, I'm just being a nice guy. It's like, no, like it's expected for you to have good files. Right. Right. Um, my first yeah. job out of college was, uh, I was actually a web designer for Motorola and everything I touched was touched by at least three, four other people at least. Yeah. So, right. you know, if things were not done correctly in my end, I would hear it from somebody. Oh yeah. And it's usually yeah. the guy sitting next to me too. So it's not like you had to walk very far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see where we are with this. Uh, let me close this one because I don't need to use it now. Here we are. Hi, Anna. She has joined the chat. My wife is here, oh. everybody. Hey, Anna. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. I just saw you a few hours ago. She's out <laughs> doing her thing today. You can probably like look out the window and there she is. Yeah. Like, oh, she's running down the street. <laughs> well, normally she's, if she's on, I'm in the other room or vice versa. So we can kind of like listen to the, the stream through each other's dialogue. Mm, right. Uh, not today though. So she's getting a fresh, a fresh take on our stream today. Nice. So you know what? I'm going to work with that little hair we added earlier just to, so that it matches his head a little better. Um, so I'm going to do a, a clipping mask. Actually, you know what? No, I changed my mind. I'm going to do a hue, a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And, you know, maybe adjust a 
color a little bit uh, so that it seems more like his hair color right. you know something like that um before and after i don't know which one you guys like better you know and, yeah you know i mean what? it's so subtle that you really you know you almost can't even you wouldn't see it unless you're zoomed into the image so i feel like the way you had it looked pretty good what i what i'll do is do a combination see like i can kind of fade it so it changes color so it starts mm. one color and then it goes into another color so there you go yeah i like that why not oops i don't like that i like that better here but yeah anyway so I'll save this and let's let's see where we are. And this is what I actually I, mean, I know this is probably not the best workflow, but I like to see where I'm, you know, what the final image would look now that I have it there. And we can actually see like a progression, right? First one I did, second one, third one, fourth one. See that? See, I mean, just look at oh, the yeah. hair. See that? Yeah. So little by little, things are looking. Oh yeah. Looking better, you know. Yeah, and, and even then, that, that subtle mask change over the hand, definitely. I felt like that helped a lot too and just creates more depth and dimension to that. You know, you're creating these these shapes and now your eyes, I mean, it's completely drawn. I'm, I feel like I'm looking into his soul <laughs> just, <laughs> and I can't look anywhere else. Right. Something I'm not liking is how soft it looks here at the bottom and that's because this piece of smoke or well, what, what do we say it was? I already forgot. Um, d uh, yeah, the dust, this dust or... thing. Yeah, so I'm going to bring that down. This is why I made it into a smart object so I could change my mind later. See that? So I'll bring that down a little bit like so. Press OK, close it, save it, and that should make it better. Okay, a little better. Still not 100% okay. happy, but better. And it, it's also now, in my opinion, too bright. So, you know, we'll right. we'll darken it up. Image adjustment. Um, levels. And just make it darker. Hey, Suze, when you have the luxury of doing a project that is maybe not on such a time crunch as today is, uh, you know, for a client and you have, let's say, you know, a week or two or however long it may take you to, to work on something with a team, do you find that it's best to, you know, work in this capacity and then walk away from it for a night or, you know, sleep on it and then come back with a fresh set of eyes the next day? Yes. Uh, the short answer to your question is yes. The long answer is if you don't have the time, here's a trick for you guys. <laughs> um, Adobe yeah. added this maybe two years ago. Um, if you go into the view menu, they have something now called flip horizontal or just this is just a preview. So you're not really rotating any pixels. So before what artists used to do is go into image, image rotation, flip horizontally, that would actually distort mm. pixels. So it, depending on your file size, the image could take a while to rotate just because it, it's actually flipping pixels. This is just a representation of your composite, just the way you're viewing it. So it's not really rotating it. So you can just go back and forth at any time. By the way, if you were to close this file, when you're in the in this view and in in, when it's flipped horizontally and open it again, it will open up normally. So this is just a preview. It's not really rotating it. That's why it flips so fast. Gotcha. So then, so then, yes, sometimes you don't have the luxury to walk away and sleep on it. You need to like work on it right away. And this right. is um, this is one way of just seeing the image in a, in a different way. And maybe things will pop up that, you know, look better or worse to your <laughs> to your eye. Um, but a, yeah, that's, so flip, a, that's a really interesting point and I have a feature I had no idea about. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool one. Um, so let me see, what else can we add on here? Actually, when I, I, I was going too fast and, and by the way, if you're wondering, why aren't you going to fix the hair? Like the way that I would fix that, to be quite frank with you is I would do this and let's work on that since I already, already talked about it. Um, I would probably get rid of it just because it's so difficult to select. And I guess we can spend the next, what, 10, 15 minutes on this? Yeah, we got about uh, 10 minutes left. Sounds good. So what I'll do is, yeah, we're going to work with this here. And I'll enable this so that we can see. So unfortunately, a lot of that hair just looks terrible. And it's just because it's so difficult to select. So like the right. easy thing, uh, which will take you a long time to find the right image, is to find the photo like the one we used earlier of that, of that lady um, and make a mask out of her hair. In this case, that's just going to take forever and, and, you know, to find the right image. So instead, we're just going to draw it in and we'll see how good we can do. So I can just select, you know, this hair and just make like a really, really small brush and just start painting in strands of hair like so. 
of different colors and I'm, I'm obviously going fast because i don't want you guys to be there for 10 minutes watching me you know paint hair in but this is basically what you would have to do Stuff and if you like. were uh we got one more question in the chat here jesus if you wanted to quickly change the hair color right just mm -hmm. at this stage like oh man i really don't like the blonde i want to go crazy or something and i want to change it blue or i want to change it um how would you go about doing that sure um let, let's talk about that so one the last thing i'll mention is not just painting in those strands of hair i would also need to blur them a little bit so because they're not so sharp right so filter right. gaussian blur and this just do like one maybe like 0 0.1 0 0.5 i don't know something like that where it's right. you know you can tell that it's not completely sharp and i mean just to show you what this looks like i'll um i'll save it and then i'll we'll try to change his hair color which again it also will require some work because his hair is blonde and it's not that easy selecting blonde hair because it's also a selection selection job but you can see some of those strands are starting to come through and you know looking better than than what was in the background there and just because it's bothering me so much uh let me just fix one thing here I'm just gonna go and just paint here and hopefully that fixes those ugly circles I saw earlier. I mean, that's better than, than what was there before, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, and I'll just paint with white. And if Thor was bald, this would be so much easier, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> or maybe if this is the Thor from the newer movies where he actually uh, has short hair, like, like yeah. our hair, yeah. Yeah, makes it a little easier. Just a little bit, um, but you know, we'll, we'll call this good for now. Yeah. And I'll, I'll save it and just to see how it looks. Yeah, okay, hair so, is, so hair it's is better, so but cool. not not amazing. Um, cool. So if, if we wanted to change the hair color, sort of the same thing, unfortunately, um, James, because we need to make sure that we select the hair. <laughs> so we're, we're right where we started, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But what you can, what I usually do is just, you know, change it to whatever color I want. So you said red, right? Or blue or green, what, what color? Whatever your heart desires. I was just going to throw like a blue out there just to let's see get a little let's, crazy. Let's look at the composite. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe like, maybe we just do be a little unrealistic with what we have right now, but just for the sake of sake of argument, maybe like a, that's kind of cool. Or like, yeah, like something like that would be sweet. All right, cool. So, so now that we're happy with the color, you know, we're back right where we started, right? We need to select the hair. So we need to, you know, now paint with white on the layer mask. And maybe I'll use my tablet for this because it will probably be more accurate and faster. And that's the advantage of using a tablet that I can use pressure sensitivity and I could just. And so you keep it, I mean, you keep it plugged in with you so that if you do have to switch you know over to it it's very easy because it's hooked up and definitely and i don't travel connected. with it so so that's why i was saying earlier that i don't teach with it because um you know before covid and all that i was doing a lot of traveling for this but right but yes here at home it's it's always plugged in i'm gonna dig in that color i mean it's very different very Ooh, uh, I mean, un unlike thor but yeah you can add it a little to his beard it's got like that jason momoa beard going on yeah this is his, uh, his cousin. Definitely. His brother from another mother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great questions, guys. Keep them coming. We have about a little less than 10 minutes here uh, on the stream. So any questions that you all have for Jesus? Uh, again, we will be back tomorrow again. I believe we're working on a different project. So yeah. this might be the last time we see Thor for the next few minutes. <laughs> That's right. And let us know what kind of... Uh poster we should create tomorrow what theme do you guys think we should do no superheroes we already did a superhero theme one so it'd be it'd be interesting to see what you guys are interested in learning tomorrow so let us know might be cool jesus i'm not sure what you have planned not to throw a wrench in the system but to maybe implement some graphics or some titles or something that yeah you know like the, the name of the movie and and s some spacing to show that'd be cool where those titles actually uh end up going Sounds good. Yeah, we'll definitely incorporate that into whatever we decide to do. <laughs> that is like really crazy color. All right, cool. Let, let's save this and see where where we are. Ooh, I'll probably go darker, but you know, we'll yeah. see what that what, what that looks like. With, Sweet, um, that's cool. Um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully that answered your question in the chat. I don't remember who asked that, but I mean, 
essentially like the same process of trying to cut this hair out is the same process that you would have to take mm -hmm. to change the color. So now that you have that cut out and you mask that out, it'd be a little easier to go back and change it. It's not too. looking bad, to be honest. It's not, it's cool. You, you, know, you know what? Maybe let's work on it a little more. Yeah. Sometimes you don't expect uh, some of those adjustments to work out in the end and they just, it's a shifted perspective. And you're like, okay, cool. I like that. Yeah, part. it's like, oh, good, good, good idea. What I'll do is, um, okay, here, this is what I'll, I'll do it differently. So I'm gonna put the layer mask in a group, put that layer in there. That way I can use one mask for multiple adjustment layers. And now I could also do a curves adjustment in there and then just, you know, kind of darken the hair. I think it was too dark, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, too bright. I think the right. issue was, and maybe too saturated. So let's... Yeah, now it's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it let's... could almost be like this like gray, white, white color or two like you could really take it i think oh, i like that sweet. better yeah that's yeah. awesome that's really really cool and we'll see about that oh yeah see that yeah yeah the dark well because now it blends a lot better with with where he is oh yeah i think that looks much oh, much yeah. better and something that's else that, that oh sorry what was that james that's cool it's really cool yeah, so something else that I, I you know, should have done, and I, I know I was talking all this smack about, like, not painting uh, your, your rim lights. Sometimes you have to paint them in. So in this case, you know, just to make this a little more realistic, I would um, paint with white, you know, just, just on some of these areas here. Maybe ch change the blend mode to maybe screen or overlay whatever, you know, works. I'll do screen for now. Maybe reduce the fill opacity just a tiny bit. And, you know, just add some of these rim lights here, maybe on his on his hammer, because, you know, there's a lot of light there, light up here. You know, wherever wherever you think you might need some of those, some of those highlights. So before and after. It also helps with the separation between the foreground and background. Right. And I know I did it earlier with the sky, but what I want to do now is add another layer right up here and then just paint, you know, like maybe right here. Cause that's where like the lightning is hitting the hammer. And you just have a soft, just a soft brush, soft brush. Yeah. And switching to overlay and it creates that nice highlight there. Now, how often are you adjusting? Um, cause I find that when I'm doing anything, you know, with these brushes, I'm constantly adjusting that opacity and flow. So how that relationship between the flow and the opacity, do you keep both of those at a hundred because you're using your, your pen to do it. And that's how you're controlling it. If you're using the mouse, you would obviously be adjusting the opacity and flow. Exactly. That, and a hundred percent. And notice that with opacity, I have this button enabled. So that's for pressure sensitivity. So when I uncheck that, I don't have it anymore. And when I do, I have it obviously with the pen. Gotcha. And I just added these, these highlights that I don't know. I think it kind of helps the image oh, yeah. make it look more, you know, cinematic, I guess that's the word that we would use. Well, um, we are making a movie poster here. So you're sort yeah. of, the, the sky is the limit. You can really create a super stylized. I, I, I dig it, man. It looks really, really good. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see what it, let's see what it looks like as the final. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, yeah I think I'm, I'm liking it. Me too. And, and, Me too. and, you know, at this point, all you really need to do is just zoom in and look for any small imperfections, um, to, to, to adjust. I would definitely spend more time on, on this region here. And if you notice on, on, on the one that I did before, I managed to get it to, to that point. And I also erased some of the hair that was on his arm just because I thought it looked better. I just didn't want to attract so much attention to it. Mm. Um, and actually the final one is, oh yeah, it's already on the final one. You know what? I kind of like the color better on the one we did here than yeah, me, me too. One. I think it's, uh, I like the blue better. I think I like the blue a lot. It just, it seems like it, it is a little more cinematic. It has more of that, that Marvel vibe, that, mm -hmm. that dark, you know, superhero theme. And it looks really, really good. Jesus. Uh, Thank you. awesome, awesome job. The one thing, and we don't have time, right? Yeah. I'll do one thing for like one minute. Yeah. We got um, one minute. I, I kind of don't like um how small the debris is on mm. on this side so i would just probably make it bigger it's like you know it's kind of like that client that says make the logo bigger yeah i know and it but if you've planned for that then it's it's a very quick fix it's not like oh my god i really have to go back and 
you know, take 12 steps back just to fix this one thing. In this case, yeah. you have everything la properly labeled and, and, uh, everything's a smart object. So you can go back and fix these. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. I just, I just wanted more destruction. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so there well, we go. Uh, Jesus, thank you, man. This has been a, a real treat to watch you work and to really be a part of your process. I'm, I'm super excited to uh, see what you get into tomorrow. And, uh, you've taught me a great deal today. I'm, I'm going to go work on Photoshop tonight, man. I'm excited. Awesome. Awesome. Maybe, maybe you can lead the class tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know about that. I'll, I'll, I'll chime in with my little antidotes, but again, I appreciate it. And, uh, to those in the chat, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in, for watching. Uh, we've had a great time and, uh, please make sure to tune in tomorrow at 9 30 AM Pacific time, uh, where we will be, uh, going over day two, uh, with he Jesus Ramirez. Uh, and, uh, thank you everybody for watching one little housekeeping note which i forgot to mention earlier in the chat uh please check out the second week of uh the photoshop daily creative challenge with paul tranny it's every weekday at 9 a.m uh pacific time and like i said we'll be back here tomorrow thanks guys nice. take care thanks, and uh thanks jesus i'll see you tomorrow thank you everybody see you tomorrow bye